Hi guys, and welcome to my new channel where I'm gonna be taking you through my post-processing workflow and how I edit my landscape photographs that you see on social media. Um, just a little insight into what I do in Lightroom and Photoshop. Um, so without further ado, let's take you into Lightroom and have a look at some of my images. So this image was down at Moor Critchell in Wimborne on a really foggy morning. Um, we arrived to literally thick fog. Um, you couldn't see anything, so it was a, literally a matter of waiting. Um, for compositions to arrive out of nowhere. Thankfully, I know the area quite well. I've been there a few times. So I perched up on the side of the trees where the sun was rising over here. Um, and about 30, 40 minutes after actual sunrise, lovely golden glow came over the trees. There's a big bank of trees here. Came over and lit this whole scene, hitting the edge of the bark um, on all of the trunks and the leaves just really coming to life. I mean, it's normally a really good place to come for autumn but the greens at the minute are looking fantastic so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take you through a few of the well pretty much my post-processing workflow so what i'd normally do is i would start by checking that profile correction is enabled gets rid of any of the distortion on this lens actually kind of fish bowls out <laughs> which is a bit unusual but we'll come up here and then we'll do some basic adjustments. In my head while I was composing this shot, my composition in my head was about this. I was getting a little bit of grass in, focusing on the leaves at the top, I think about there. We'll rotate it a little. Just make sure the trees are straight. There we go, fine tuning. That's perfect. What I'll then do is I will normally check the white balance. So I'm gonna keep it as shot because that's how it was. It's really golden. Don't know whether I add any in or drop it a little bit. I think I'll drop it a f just, a t just a fraction. And then add in some contrast because it's raw files are naturally quite flat. Drop the highlights because it's getting pretty harsh over here. Bring a little detail out in the shadows up here because it's very dark here, very light here. I kind of like the way they play with each other. So I'm just going to do it a little bit. I'm then going to bring my whites up. Holding down Alt on the keyboard. Previews where it clips. Don't want to get anywhere near that. About 16 will do. Same with the blacks, I'll drop them down to about 15. There we go. Now in my head, I wanted it to be really kind of ethereal. Oh, I just undid the blacks, undid. Just, there we go, so I'll bring them back. Um, I wanted it to be ethereal, I wanted it to be really kind of light. Didn't want it to be harsh. So what I'm gonna do is the new texture slider will actually bring some softness to the image too far and it just looks out of focus too much and no. So what I'm gonna do is just drop it down about 15. Same with clarity, don't wanna to go too far. I'm gonna bring that back as well. Same with the dehaze. So dehaze, if I add some, it's gonna to add too much punch. I'm actually gonna drop it off a little bit because I like the foggy, foggy look. Vibrant saturation I'm going to leave alone for now. I will do that after I do some local adjustments. I'm then going to come down to split toning. I will start around about 10 and then just move the sliders around to see how it's looking. I think we'll add some more orange to the highlights and then we'll drop the saturation back to about 5. Pressing backslash will then show before and after. That's where we started. That's where we are at the minute. So I'm liking that. Shadows, I don't know if I'll add any blue in. No, see, let me just go really funky. We don't like any of that, so I'm gonna leave that alone. Now, I'm gonna make some local adjustments now because when I was here, the orange glow hitting this was a lot stronger than what's being picked up here. So what I'm gonna do is using a circle gradient brush not a brush, just a radial tool. Drag out, nice big circle. Up the exposure a little bit. 0.2 will do. 
bring in some orange just to add some warmth make it a lot bigger because I want it to be really soft use the feather to bring that right out because I don't want that to be too high if I do it like this you're going to get a real harsh edge so I want it to be soft and gradual and I think that's what that'll do leave the contrast alone we'll drop the highlights a little bit just so I'm not and up the exposure don't make that too harsh there we go okay I'm liking this bring the overall highlights down a little bit I might drop the contrast back and now I'm going to play with the curves and add my own little S curve too much too harsh on the whites there we go Okay, I'm really starting to like this now. I'm now going to zoom in and check the closest focus point, which was this tree here. I'm going to make sure it's pin sharp, so which it is, because the 24 to 105 is a fantastic lens. But all I'm going to do is add in some sharpening. I think 60 will do. I'll then zoom out, do some masking, just so I'm not adding the sharpening where I don't need it because I want this to still be very soft put in some noise reduction just so we're not looking too noisy over here still buttery smooth good stuff okay that's pretty much all I'm gonna do over here in Lightroom I think I'll look at the magenta I normally leave this alone. I think I am going to leave this alone. So I'll undo that. I'm not going to play with the tint. As a quick before and after again, just pressing the backslash. So it's mainly adding the glow here, which is just representing what I saw on the actual morning. And it's just a really magical experience. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to move over into Photoshop. I'm going to do a little thing called the Autumn Effect, which I learned from Nick Page about over a year ago now um, and it works great with woodland images so I'm going to right click edit in Adobe Photoshop now let this boot up it's going to keep this as a DNG file so it's going to keep all the raw data it's not going to affect anything like that it's not going to turn into a JPEG and the great thing is these two programs will work together fantastically both have their advantages disadvantages there we go opened up in Photoshop so what we're going to do now is I'm just going to go around the frames of the image I'm going to zoom in 100% and then just back off a little bit to about 50 I'm just going to check the borders to see if there's anything distracting which there isn't if I'm being really picky this branch here it's slightly annoying. So I'm going to go to the spot removal tool. Is this spot removal tool? No, spot healing brush, sorry. I'm going to make it soft, that'll do. And I'm just going to paint over. And there we go, gone. Same here. Ever so distracting. These are fine. I'm not going to do anything against these. Just going to touch the ones that poke out in the frame. And you see Photoshop does, just does an amazing job at getting rid of it. There we go. This one here in particular, because it's creeping into the frame of the image. You can also see this branch that was here. Didn't spot that while I was there. I'll get rid of that. Cobweb there is quite cool is it yeah it's too distracting so I'm gonna go back down there's little things that your eyes pick up that you don't see on the site and yeah I'm really liking that the light on these is nice because I'm gonna keep that because it's quite it's quite cool I like that right let's do the autumn effect now so control J duplicates the layer I'm gonna then go into filter blur Gaussian blur probably find for this image about 
36, 40 is okay. Looks ridiculous. I'm blurring the image, but don't worry. It's not going to actually look like that at the end. Um, I'm now going to control L and I'm going to play with the levels. So I'm now going to drop the blacks until it literally crushes them in the corner. Do the same with the whites. Actually bring them out. Create a horrific effect here. But we're going to back it off. So now I'm going to go to soft light. Drop the opacity right back. And then return it back to normal. And I'm going to drop it to about 8%. See how it looks. And you see what it's doing? It's creating a very soft image. It's actually adding to the, the drama and the atmosphere. <clears throat> but if I zoom in, you're going to see that it's actually making the branches even softer. Um, the barks and the branches. So both of them, which I don't actually want. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just add a mask. Select a black brush, 60, about 50% opacity. Black kind of erases and white brings back, but it's never deleting anything because it's a layer mask, so it's it's not destructive. Um, so I could go like this now, get rid of all of that, but the layer mask is still there, and it's not it's only affected that part of the image. So I can now delete that. Add a new layer mask and just add it where I want it. So I'm actually going to take it away from the box here, and I'm actually going to drop the pass, uh, bring the opacity up to 100, because I know I don't want it on this tree. And with the tablet, I'm just going to paint away, literally as a paintbrush, where I don't want the effect. That's just around there. Zoom back out to 100% or 20% and there we go. That is pretty much all I'm going to do in Photoshop. So the before and after of the autumn effect, <clears throat> which I really like. So I'm now going to save that and head back into Lightroom where it's going to re-import it. And there we go. There's the image. I'm now going to restart this to a three. So I know the one star is the Lightroom file, the three star is after I've done it in Photoshop. What I'm going to now do is I'm going to do a final check. I'm going to control and square tap around, which will rotate the image and just throw my eyes off it to see if anything stands out like a sore thumb that shouldn't be there or it's too bright or too dark. And if I'm honest, I'm really liking it. I love how it's really dark in here, really light over here. There's nothing I don't think I'm going to change. Sharpening's all good. I may now play with the colours a little bit. So you've got to be very careful when you do this because you can overcook it so much. So hue is going to change the colour of certain colours. I may drop the yellows just a tad. Minus four. Same with the orange. I'm actually going to, there's no blue in the image, so I don't have to worry about that. This is where you'll notice, if I go back to the Lightroom file, I didn't play much with the saturation at all. I don't think I did. Yeah, so vibrant saturation is at zero. I'll add it on this file now if I feel it needs it. I'll play with the vibrance. Naturally, the Sonys are very vibrant anyway, so you don't really need to add anything. Normally, you can take away, but to be honest, I think just four or five. If I do a quick before and after. Going a little bit more orange, a little bit more punch. Never ever do that to your images. <laughs> Unless you want to, of course, if that's your style. But just be very careful with saturation. I don't even think, I'm not going to add any to this image. Just going to add the vibrance. I'm going to bring back on the oranges a little bit. It was a bit too much when I did the before and after, I can see. And I think that's it. Hit L on the keyboard and it's going to actually darken it off and it's going to turn it like this. And I think I really like that. Mm. 
What's going on here? Nice and sharp. Add a touch more contrast. Check the whites again. Don't want them to clip. Bring the blacks back down a little bit. There you go. And that's the final image. So that was a quick insight into what I do in Photoshop and Lightroom. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Really quick video, but it's just a little insight into how I get my final images from the back of the camera. And if you want to see any more, just subscribe. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see any tutorials that are specific to what you're looking for, um, and I'll see what I can do. But in the meantime, have a great one. Thank you.